Hi guys, you asked for it. So I did some overheating tests and some battery tests on my new little ZV E10. And I know that I'm Canadian and I'm supposed to say Z, but yeah, it ruins the alphabet song. You know, next time won't you sing with med? Doesn't make any sense. Anyway, let's talk about it. First of all, thanks so much to everybody who's been saying nice things about my other ZVE10 videos. I'm gonna call them Doug because it's easier to say than Z or ZVE10. But I appreciate all of you pushing me so close to that 100,000 subscriber mark. That is, uh, what? No? It's more, it's not even, it's not even 2,000. And, and you don't exist. Oh, I have the same producer as Pete. So before I tell you what happened with the overheating test, don't forget to subscribe because I'm going to do more stuff. I'm going to do some more stuff about Catalyst Browse. People seem to be a bit confused about that and how to set up your ZV-E10 uh, for video. Just a nice quick setup. I know some of the Sony menus can be confusing, so uh, I will go through that with you guys in upcoming videos. And I'll talk about other things like color grading and which picture profile to use and whether or not you can use the ZV-E10 for a studio camera because everybody uses this out and about in a vlogging sense. All the reviews were the camera outside, but a lot of people have been asking me about what it looks like inside in the studio. And in fact, why don't I just put old Doug up here and uh, see what happens? Oh my God, guy, Doug's in the studio. So I look as gorgeous as ever right now. So what was I using at the beginning of the video? Could it possibly be a full frame A7 III Beast? Maybe. I gotta cut my hair, and because I have a flip screen on the ZV-E10, I can see that I need a haircut. Nice. So if you like the way this looks, and who wouldn't, I'll go deeper into how I get this look, and I'm actually using the kit lens right now. No fancy Sigma F1.4, just the kit lens. Uh, the, the Sigma 1.4 is a little, I have the 16 millimeter, it's a bit wide for this space. You see too much of my little studio here. So I like more of a 35 millimeter focal range and that's why I put the kit lens on. So that's about a 35 millimeter focal length in, in full frame terms. Anyway, let's get to the overheating tests, right? Or lack thereof overheating tests, am I right? I am very impressed with this little fella. First of all, I'm gonna tell you, on a full charge, I got 101 minutes of 4K 24P recording continuous on the little ZV-E10. I did that two separate times and I got 100 minutes the second time and 101 minutes the first time. That is very good. People complain about the small FW50 battery that comes in the APS-C lineup, in, except for the A6600, but uh, they have optimized this camera, the uh, ZV-E10, to use that battery efficiently so you get more picture taken time and you get more video time. I cannot complain about 100 minutes of 4K footage. I mean, I can, but I won't, because that would be ridiculous. So when it comes to overheating, if you set this camera's internal temperature to high, you are not going to be able to overheat this camera very easily. So for the first test, I set Doug up here on a tripod in my living room. It was 80 degrees Fahrenheit, according to my thermostat, and I uh, hooked it up to a little power bank there so that the battery wouldn't be the limitation. And I put in 128 gig SD card, and I got two hours and 40 minutes of 4K 24P footage, and then my card ran out. There was no overheating light, there was nothing. And uh, that is long enough, because I had other tests to do. So two hours and 40 minutes with the power bank until my SD card ran out. Next, I took it outside, and outside was about the same temperature as inside. It was about 80 degrees Fahrenheit. However, it was sunny, so I put the camera in direct sunlight. There was a bit of a breeze blowing, but I did the exact same test out in the sunshine, outdoors, at 80 degrees Fahrenheit, and uh, I got the same result two hours and 40 minutes, except this time, what I did was instead of hooking up to a power bank, I just kept swapping the battery out and pressing record. So when my first battery died, I just put in another battery and then uh, I got bored after two hours and 40 minutes because I have a life. Well, not really, but I was sick of doing that test. Again, no overheating warning light at all. Now, because I know Sony cameras a little bit, I went straight into the menus and set the temperature to high for these long tests because that is what I do with all of my Sony cameras and it's what almost everybody does. They, when they have it on the standard setting, the heat warning comes on too quickly in all of their cameras. I'm not exactly sure why they do this. Some people say it's because they don't want the outside of the camera to get so hot that it hurts people's fingers when they touch it and it has nothing to do with the internal temperature. And other people say, oh no, it'll damage the components if you set the temperature on high and you're always using it on high. But uh, I don't know anyone 
who has ever damaged the Sony components by setting the temperature to high, myself included, and all the people I know that shoot Sony, everybody sets their temperature to high and no one has any issues. But I did run a test just to make sure in standard temperature. And in fact, yes, the overheat warning came on at the 30 minute mark and at 35 minutes of 4K 24P recording, it actually shut off. So I always set the internal temperature to high. Now I did manage to make the heat light come on at one point, even using the high setting. And that was, I was in the house and I had laid the camera on a table. So there was no air underneath it. And I had the uh, flip screen closed. Uh, the heat warning came on at about an hour and 20 minutes. However, it actually never overheated. It just uh, went until my memory card ran out over two hours, but it did have the heat warning on for about 40 or 45 minutes. Still didn't manage to overheat it, but it was letting me know. Like a 21 year old drunk girl, it just wanted me to know it was hot. Man, I love seeing that box around my eye. That is so nice to see you know you're in focus. Not like you, Panasonic. I still love you too though. Oh, and I should mention that the battery does trickle down, losing power, even if you are connected to a power bank. Now, you don't lose much power. Basically, you lose about 10%, or at least I was losing about 10% every hour. So uh, you could really run this pretty much as long as you want it. So great news, am I right? Now, I could have just waited and put this in a big old long video, but I wanted to keep you guys updated as I'm going along. Plus, I love making these little videos, you know, and drinking some apple juice. It's a fun time. Anyway, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We'll see you soon. Okay, bye-bye. I'm so hot.